warm the pot before you have a cup of tea. I'm going to make a pot because it's the morning and I'll be having quite a few before I get on with the day. So I think three tea bags will do. I'm waiting for my Riverford box. This is not a sponsored video. Richard Vobes told me about it. And because he put me onto it, he gave me a cord and I had 15 pound off. So I'm waiting for them to turn up because they should have turned up by now. Right, I need to find my tea cozy. By the way, I looked out of the window this morning and noticed there's a mountain and it reminds me of Walton's mountain. So, welcome to Walton's mountain. <laughs> right, let's get the tea cozy. I haven't had an organic box for quite a few years. Now, obviously, in time, I will be growing my own, so I won't be needing this. But uh, I thought for the first, maybe the first few weeks, it might be a good idea. Let's have a look what we've, what we've got. Cavol Nero. Are you, are you a fan? I'm not that much of a fan, but it's food. Oh, look, the leeks are on a diet. Not much weight to them, but again, they'll do. I could have done with these yesterday when I made my leek and potato soup. Obviously, they are seasonal veg, so we'll have a few parsnips. I do love a roasted parsnip. Mushrooms. Okay, I might be able to have them this morning with my scrambled egg and a few little mushrooms on the side. Nice cabbage. I think that's a savoy. I do love a savoy cabbage. It's my favourite out, out of them all. And what else do we have? Carrots. Look at them. I wouldn't be surprised if they were still in the field this morning. And then onions. Now I don't do a lot with onions. So these will probably see me through for about three months. And what's in this bag? I'm assuming they are potatoes. Now they would usually ar arrive about half five, six o'clock in the morning. But the delivery guy said there was an issue today. So that's why they've turned up at half eight. Ah, red potatoes. Look at the color on them. Beautiful. And quite, quite a few of them as well. So that's my veg sorted. Now I need to get a bit of meat. So I think when I'm out and about in the village today, I may pop into the butchers. Now I was going to pop into the butchers yesterday when I was out and, when I was out and about, but I didn't know that yesterday the butchers and a lot of the shops closed at one o'clock for the day. So obviously all this thing will take time to get into my head. So there is my veg. So I might buy some organic sausages from one of the local farms here. But to start off, oh, and also I'll investigate whether you can buy any local eggs. Because when I was out on the weekend uh, doing the first video from here, when I went to the allotment site, I did hear some uh, chickens. So I might see if there's a possibility of buying some fresh eggs from one of the little small holdings around the place. Right, what am I doing? Scrambled egg, mushrooms, but first of all, a cup of tea. Trying to get into a new routine of doing things, and I've just realised I've already broken that routine before I've even started. But the plan was, which I will do now, is to put the pot on the breakfast table. Come through.
service. <laughs> if only. Right, I'm gonna have a cup of tea. I'm gonna have some scrambled egg, some mushrooms. We did have a bit of snow last night, but to be honest, it was nothing to film. By the time I got the camera out, it had gone. But I know that people in London had snow yesterday and even people down on the Worthing coastline had quite thick snow, but nothing here. They have promised some for later in the week. But it is very cold, I will tell you that for note. Nothing better than a pot of tea. That now will keep warm for at least an hour and I'll get two or three cups out of it. So after I've had this, today I'm going to go for a walk down to somewhere where they call Kumsaibrin Basin. It is an, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it is something that was formed by the Ice Age. But you'll see it when I go down later. Uh, I think there's an event going on but I'm just going to call in and say, hello, I've arrived in the village, what's occurring? Right, I'm going to make my breakfast and I'll catch up with you in a bit. Look how beautiful that mountain is. And we will walk up it very soon, but not today. I've got somewhere else to go today. Well, it's certainly a frosty morning. I will have to invest in some long johns. <laughs> also, I need to invest in a pair of Wellingtons because the way that I'm going to go today, I think will be a bit muddy. Now, if you look in the center of the picture there, find the, the wind turbine. Just below it, you will see there is a, a waterfall. And I can see from this distance, you might not be able to because this camera is not that good, but it's frozen. And I have seen in a very heavy frost, people climb it. The rock climbers from Cardiff came up back in the 80s and they climbed it, the front of it. And again, we, we, we will go up there, but that's not today's journey. I'm walking over the land here of Stelco Hardy, which was a manufacturer of steel, I think. Because after the coal mines closed, there were no jobs for people. And down the road, there was a, a bakehouse, but a rather large factory doing cakes. I don't remember that. Maybe it's a good job I don't, because the smell of cakes when you wake up in the morning. Oh. But this was the Stalco Hardy factory, which closed down in the mid 90s, the early 90s, and now it's just left to go back to nature. I think the land is still available for sale. There were talks of a supermarket being put here, but nothing came of it. We are up the very top end of the valley here. Right, this is why I said I need a pair of Wellingtons. At least with the frost last night it should be a bit hard so I can get over it. I'm not going to come back this way to go home. I'll go down the, the high street. So I should do okay, although there seems to be a stream here. I wonder if this is actually the path, or maybe, maybe memory has got me confused. But look, right, which way am I to go? I think I need to go up, up there. Now how is this going to happen? I certainly don't want to fall in this today, because it will be freezing. I'm hoping that bank over there is firm, because after three, I'm going one, two there you go this is how I'm going to get fit it's climbing the mountains
just about to get out onto the flat. And what's good about being then here is we're surrounded by trees, so it's not as cold. But look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I've come to accept now that I have come on the wrong path. And rather than a designated path, I have come on an old sheep trail. As these mountains, even as far up to the 80s, were full of sheep and they weren't fenced in. So they would turn up at your front door, especially in spring, and eat all the, the daffodils. But that silence, just listen to it. Ah, look at that. Right in front of me there, there's a very large rhododendron bush. And you find that there's a bit of an unofficial tradition of people coming into the woods and planting their favourite tree or something. So obviously this must have been a favourite walk of someone and they left instructions or maybe they planted it themselves because on the mountain around the corner which again we will go to in time I planted some spring bulbs back in the 80s well it'd be interesting to see if they're still there and there is an Asa palmatum grandiflora hidden in another part of the the forest but look at that, that has been there for some years and it is sheltered. So, okay, put that on the list as somewhere to come back in the late spring. And th there's even some on this side as well. See, when it's, nature is left, it sorts, it sorts itself out. This forestry is not only good during the winter to keep you sheltered from the, the wind, but in the summer, it's a fantastic place to come to get out of the heat waves, because we do get them in Wales, few and far between. Not as much as in London, we would usually get a heat wave starting in April all the way to July. Not as bad as that, but it'll be interesting to see how the seasons are here in the valleys in the South Wales Valleys. Now down here there is some more rhododendron, but you never take the mountain for a fool. You always are cautious to things that you see. And there's a fence here, and down there is a hole. Now this mountain, back in the late 1880s, was littered with mines, and they called them levels. And that is where they just basically built a tunnel entrance and drilled into the mountain to get the coal out. And on this mountain, there were absolutely hundreds dotted all along. So you do really need to be cautious when you walk out into the forestries in Wales, because you could fall down a hole. And obviously here, that is what I have found, is an old mining level. But that is not the adventure I'm taking today. So we will walk past very gingerly on this section of the path. But it's amazing to think that inside this mountain to the right of me, men went and dug the coal out with picks and often in the very early days with just their hands. It would be amazing to see if you could still go in them. But like I said, that's not today's adventure. Now, even though I just said that is not today's adventure, I have come to explore. So this is the top of the level, which has now sunk and fallen in. But down here, and see if you can try and make it out, there is an archway. There's a bit of uh, corrugated iron, and that is the archway that is going into the level. And if you look in front of it, there is a bit of flat land, so that's where the men were obviously stationed. All these trees have obviously come up in the last 100, 150 years. 
but it's these type of trees that were used as the pit props in order to hold up the the mine so they would all base themselves there and go into the mine and go in for about half a mile to a mile into the mountain and what's obviously happened here is the top part of it has just uh, sunk and then go into the mountain to get the coal out and when there was the big strike in I think the 1920s because they wanted to put an extra working hour on the end of the day but they wanted to reduce the the wages of the miner and the call was not a minute on the day and not a penny off our pay and that led to riots further down and that's why Winston Churchill was not really seen as a good person in the in the valleys because he when he was the home secretary he sent in the army to deal with the Welsh miners and the miners never forgive Churchill even though he did good during the Second World War and this is what John Rogers talks about on his YouTube channel you just walk the countryside and you read the mountains and the stories are there the men are here I can hear their voices but tea put the kettle on have a cup of tea and now only the ghosts remain Am I ever going to get to the end of my journey? That's what I'm thinking now. Around about the 80s, a few of us came up to the mountain and we decorated one of the Christmas trees with tinsel and and baubles. Obviously, we didn't know we didn't know that much back back in those days about plastics, but we we decorated the Christmas tree and it became a bit of a thing where locals would go up and try and find the tree that was festooned with Christmas. It wasn't that exact tree, but that is a replica. So it's now downhill now. We've got over the peak and it's down into Cumsybren Basin. That part I've just come through was certainly a treacherous part. My feet are absolutely soaking. I actually prefer going up mountains rather than going down them. Because if you go down them and you're top weight goes over then you're getting to the bottom faster than Humpty Dumpty whoops see and you grab all the things and they're not that strong so I will be getting a stick in fact the mountain you ask and the mountain will provide although this one is covered in lichens so it might not be that that strong so I'll throw that to one side in a minute there you go now gotta get down here so I find it is best to walk down with your feet sideways he said to sort of get a grip that's what he said <laughs> just before he just before he slipped my knee is giving me some jip I'll tell you that for now <clears throat> right let me get down on my on my derriere there you go, that wasn't that bad. I am hoping by walking the mountains I'm going to try and walk at least an hour every day. I'm hoping that by losing the weight the pain in my knees will get better. Some weeks it's the right knee and then other weeks it's the left knee. As long as they both don't go at the same time and when I'm up on the mountain then we'll be fine. I hope there's a cup of tea in this place where I'm going. Or maybe they would have all packed up and gone by the time I get there. It's a good job that I'm not coming to volunteer today. I'm just coming to pop in to say hello and to tell them that I am in the area. I was nearly in the, I was nearly in the hospital then. <laughs> but it's all good fun. Right, come on. Far away a tea is calling. A hot and steamy brew. Come drink me now. Come drink me now. And warm your little cockles all too. I'm starting to think 
maybe this is the designated path because look that is cut out and there looks to be now a flat path so maybe I was correct who knows I just came out of the little clear in there and I thought I must be there now <laughs> and I've just looked at this view and I've gone about half a mile down the road <laughs> if I had actually gone down the road so I haven't made that much that much progress but I can see that I am now approaching what I think is the official path so we will be in Combsyburn and Basin in about 10 minutes I think that's funny Mountain is having a bit of a laugh with me saying welcome all but welcome home I might do these walks again in the summer and in the spring because it is wonderful to go through these little conclaves and see the buds of spring bursting out. I am so grateful for this hat that I bought many months ago now. It has come in very handy. It's given very good service. Although next time I think I'll bring my own flask of tea just in case, you know, I could get to the end here and there'd be no tea at all. And what a disaster that would be. I'm on the right path now. <laughs> We're going to see some people soon. You do start to worry after a few hours when you do a full day up on the mountain. You do start to worry, am I going because you've got to uh, give yourself time to get back down the mountain and come home. I know many times as a child going up to the mountain with a flask of tea and a packet of sandwiches and watching the sun go down, beautiful up there, watching the sun go down and then having to come home in the dark but it was all right, we had the light of the silvery moon to lead us on our way and that is one of the walks I'm going to do in the coming months is a midnight walk because here it is amazing in the night once it goes dark it's dark you can see the stars last night i was looking out i didn't know what the constellations were but i'll get my book and i hear that this is an area of scientific interest when it comes to dark skies so i'll explore all this over the coming months but yes breathe that fir tree air in it's good to be home. Who needs London now? <laughs> Look at that uh, morning sun coming through the, the trees there. I can hear some noise. I wonder what's going on. Ah, it is the, the railway. During the 1960s, I think it was, when Dr. Beechin traveled all across the country he closed a lot of railways and there was one from here from Treherbert that goes up that went up to Blind Rhondda and Blind Combe and then through the Blind Combe tunnel all the way to the Avon Valley and they closed it and the end of the the, the end of the line then became Treherbert but a year ago they closed that but just to electrify the line so that we can get to Cardiff a bit quicker. I think it has shaved the journey from an hour to 55 minutes. I'm sure it's worth it. What is so nice about a mountain walk is when you come out into the sunshine and you feel the warmth of the day kiss your skin like a teenager in love.
nice bit of land here for an allotment. In fact, I can see the allotment site across, across the mountain. But again, that is another day. Today it's all about going down to Treherbert and saying hello. And even if they aren't there, we've had an adventure. Because it's not about the destination, it's about the journey to get there. So there are horses on the left of me, but look at this lovely pond here. Look at that. On a hot summer's day, come up and sit by this pond and just relax. Enjoy the peace and quiet. How can you be stressed in Wales? So here was where the old brewery used to be. I do not remember that, but now it has been used by the community for a project called Welcome to the Woods. It's strange how it's windier as you come down into the valley. I can smell like a wood burning stove somewhere. This is Welcome to the Woods, which is an, in an initiative, which we'll go and talk to them in a few weeks, or maybe we'll talk to them today. But they built this teepee for the use of the community, and they built it from materials from the forestry. And there they are. They've been doing some work on the mountain. They've been cleaning up um, somewhere called the, the the Pixie Bridge. So let's go up and say hello. Let's see if Ian is here. Where's this tea that you promised me then? Hey. <laughs> How are you doing? So I'll come back on another day, but just. Uh, a brief introduction. This is Ian, and you're in charge of Welcome to the Woods. I'd like to think I'm in charge, Sean, yeah. I'm what is it? Well, we're a community woodland group, really, Sean. We're a group of, of people that wanted to see more happening with the local landscape, uh, and local people over the last sort of 10 years have rolled their sleeves up, and we've made certain things happen here, working with Natural Resources Wales, the Forestry Commission here in Wales. Uh, and we've, uh, you know, we've developed a little fire pit area, built a micro hydro, we're standing on our, uh, our roundhouse and our in and a small micro enterprise site as well here and we've planted an orchard recently on the other side as well Sean. And what I think is great is, is that the people are doing it because yes. one of my frustrations during the 90s was everybody wanted the council to do it yeah. and I used to say let's get off our own asses and do it. Well I think we've seen that but you know if, if things are dropped in here people tend to not look after mm -hmm. them and tend to not want to get involved but if uh, you know we work on local people's energy so if local people want to see it happen and they're willing to roll their sleeves up and get involved we'll try and make it happen so that's kind of the the, the way we work really Sean so I totally agree with you local people doing it for themselves really important. Well I'll come back in a few weeks and we'll have a proper in-depth tour. I look forward to it. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed that walk, and like I said, we'll meet up with Ian and all these groups and everything that's going on over the coming months. Hopefully when it's a bit more warmer. But I'm going to head home now, have a bit of lunch, and I'll catch up with you really soon. So from me, until next time, bye for now. Music